Hello, my name is George Mackay and welcome to Distraction Tactics Film Club. We, uh, our first question for you was basically, yeah, what have you been doing to keep yourself distracted in the lockdown and, and, and how are you? I've been sort of doing the th lots of things which I've sort of said I've never had time for. So kind of watching things which I've always talked about. So I've just finished last night The Wire which I've never, not like not the whole, but the first se the first season. And I've, you know, and I know there's many seasons, but um, that is a TV show that I, I haven't watched much telly, but that everyone talks about and says how amazing it is. So Dude, it's I'm, amazing. I'm, I'm ashamed to admit I've also still never seen it. And I think it's one of those things where because people love it so much, it almost made me quite immaturely like react against that and be like oh. yeah 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 um but is it worth it was it was it was it worth it it's so worth it it's so worth it it's so satisfying all the kind of narratives coming together and everything and yeah it's just great it's really it's really really good so i'm do, doing that and um doing you know just also taking the time to be with family who are here which you don't often get yeah. to do that doing a fair bit of cooking and doing a wee bit of writing and just sort of all the things which when you're working on something else kind of get put on the back burner it can feel less important but actually matter loads um, yeah yeah so, um, so like firstly what attracted you to the role and like when did you when when did the shoot happen it must have been a while ago it, it was a while ago now I, I think what first attracted me to the role was was Justin, Justin Cazell as a director. Like, I don't know if, if any of uh, the film club have seen Snowtown or Macbeth. He also did Assassin's Creed, but to like, I think his style is more suited to, or he was kind of, Snowtown basically is the most affected I've ever been in the cinema and was just desperate. I was just desperate to work with him. And so the opportunity of working with Justin, and then also the part kind of came at a time where I was wanting to sort of find out a lot about sort of like you know you're in your mid-20s you want to know you know who you are where you want to go where you're from what made you what you want to do all that kind of stuff and my dad is Australian and a big part of he's a big part of who I am and a big part of who he is I never really thought to investigate because of the distance um, and was always felt quite removed so the idea of playing a young man who's in that similar kind of running from his past looking at his past using it to what he wants to do kind of maelstrom in a sort of Australian punk kind of mix up with, you know, Justin Cazelle at the helm was, was everything. Yeah. I mean, that definitely sounds like <clears throat> quite attractive prospect. <laughs> I, yeah. I wanted to ask, yes. Oh, sorry. You go. What no, you I was going to say? say my parents are South African and it's so interesting having that kind of connection with the place, but you also are a generation removed and yeah. um, it must've been really nice to, to sort of dig into that a little bit. Yeah, it kind of, it came from, because also there was so much about like the process with Justin that was like, I guess it's, it's different for a non-Australian audience. It's, it's can kind of, it works on a double level. It can either be its own story about a bloke called Ned and all of that world. Or in Australia, there's obviously the kind of relationship between who Ned Kelly is and the myth of Ned Kelly. And in sort of sometimes embodying that, sometimes poking fun at that, sometimes taking it apart, sometimes committing to it. I had to kind of, Justin wanted me to have a much more kind of in-depth and sort of expansive, I guess, position on Australian culture. So it was like, f like loads of films to watch, loads of music to listen to, loads of books on it. And, and just getting through all of that culture, there was a bunch of things which pinged out about my dad that were like, oh, that's why his humour is the way it is. Oh, okay, I see that. That's why that's funny. I get that now. Where I never did, it was just his humour. I was going to ask you about what, what um, Justin asked you to prepare for this role because it was quite an extraordinary process. Could you yeah. talk us through it a bit? Well, the first thing was is like Justin just offers up the opportunity to like to go in. You know, he's like, if you want to, I want you to to like immerse yourself in this. And I remember there was this inspiring but intimidating email that came through that after we first spoke that just said to do. And it was like a page of Aussie cinema to get kind of culture, humor, tone, character, you know, all of this stuff like Waking Fright, The Chant of Jimmy Blacksmith, Chopper, Romper Stomper, um, so many different films, uh, Picnic at Hanging Rock. And then there was like a page of um, Aussie music and a lot of punk music. So like put the humor of like Paul Kelly and the folk songs. Then you've got like the birthday party, Nick Cave's first band. Um, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, 
the Saints, the Drones. Gareth Lydiard is a kind of the singer and one of the main writers of the, the Drones, and he's a musician that kind of was a big reference for Ned in terms of the sort of poetic aspect they wanted with the character. Um, so there's all this music to listen to, as well as like indigenous music to just like a mix. And then I kind of went down an Irish version of that as well, with big into Luke Kelly and the Dubliners and all of the Irish kind of culture that was in the part of Ned. And then on, so then there was the, the list of things to do in terms of to do, and that was come to Australia early. I want you working on a station. I want you working with horses. You need to write every day because this man is trying to articulate himself and trying to be a wordsman. So write poems, write histories, write thoughts, diaries, everything, character, you. Just write, 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 write. Um, and then I went and lived with Justin and Essie. I went and chopped wood in Tasmania because uh, there was going to be a scene which never was there about, you know, where the first time you see Ned, he felled a tree. But even that was like an experience. And I wound up, I didn't get to a station, but I lived on a farm for a wee while with friends and friends and spent time with horses. And I went to Ireland because for a time we were going to play him Irish rather than Australian. I went to where his dad was from and rode horses there and met the traveller community as well, which I thought had, you know, equivalent, uh, you know, um, equivalents to, to the sort of the Kelly gangs um, situation. And then there was books to read as well, colonial history of, of Australia, history of Ned. And then also lastly, you know, Dan might like, we formed a band. Um, okay. There was like a four week pre-production rehearsal with everyone. And Justin would like, tell what the name was. Yeah. Was, I didn't know anything about it. Well, we were called Fleshlight and uh, we, he booked us a gig in Melbourne and he was like, you've, got, you've got a gig in three weeks. You guys need to come up with a name and a song and, and like and a set of songs. So we wrote, you know, like eight songs or something. And that was our rehearsal for three weeks was to go in and the, 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 the boys wear dresses in the gang. It's kind of like their armor, which kind of, there's lots of sort of things attached to it, but we'd go in, we'd put our dresses on and we'd jam punk songs for like three weeks and then played this gig. And that was like, and then, you know, a couple of days later we began shooting and that was sort of the attitude of everything was like that kind of aggressive, confused, angry um, sort of swagger is what they wanted. Dude, it sounds amazing. How was the gig? It was great. It was great. Like it was, uh, it was so much fun. We just came off it like, you know, this was the best thing ever. Like, you know, it was, um, it was so much fun. And we, we played in a bar, like it wasn't kind of, you know, from the do, film. Do you, remember, do you remember where the, what the bar was in Melbourne? It was, it was the Gasso in Melbourne. In oh, Colling nice. Yeah, yeah. So it was, um, it's just in the downstairs bit. It wasn't like the main stage. Yeah, yeah. We went, we, actually, we were in Melbourne in like earlier this year. We went there for a oh, uh, really, yeah. The guy that's promoting our gig owns that place, so we went there. Oh, yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, he, we had like a sort of party thing there, which was really fun. Um, that's mad. On the other side, that's where we got to meet up. We all got to go yeah. to Melbourne, <laughs> and you guys can play, and I can just cheer. Yeah, well, there's, there's two songs in the film. It's like two, two of our songs wound up. There's a scene where you first see my character and he's in a boxing match, and that was one of our songs. And then yeah. the credits, as the credits roll, they play another song, and that's our song as well. Oh, amazing. So, yeah, yeah. So it was good fun. It was like, but it was, it was so clever. Justin just wanted us all listening into each other in the way that you have to with music and, um, and that sort of peripheral understanding and... You know, and also opens you up as well because you're songwriting together and it's like, it's sort of exposing. It's um, like a super vulnerable place to, to and potentially yeah. interesting place. But yeah, that's, dude, that, the whole process sounds, sounds incredible and, and you must have learned so much as well. Is it, is it always like that? It, you know, it, was this role particularly immersive? That, this is the most immersive, I've, like, the most immersive experience I've ever had on a, on a project. I mean, and I think... A degree in, in in almost like a degree in, in Australian culture through the eyes of, of yeah 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 it's sort of like it's it's funny because you do there's so there's so it's so interesting kind of when you I, I it's something that I never thought of and also what I thought of what I saw as Australian as a kid is like without kind of poking holes in what's good about the the place it's it's an amazing place but it's like when I went as a kid a few times I was like the weather's great everyone plays sport everyone's happy this is great and you sort of but then without wanting to sort of take it apart for the sake of it you know I, I just I'm embarrassed to say I didn't know the colonial history until sort of until I researched you know that it's made up of you know that the, the 
the, the, the British sort of colonised and settled there. But the, the, the fact that all the states were penal colonies other than South Australia, like, and where these people came from and the disputes that were going, going on in the places where, you know, the Scots, English and Irish all travelled across and the reasons for travelling across kind of really does give you a sort of, and again, it's all an assumption, but like it gives you some form of understanding as to why, you know, like even their humour, it's this amazing gallows humour, but I think it's because it was only a, relatively a few generations ago that people were first settling there for a second time, you know, other than the indigenous. And that was built, that, that land was built on such hardship, you know, and even the, the treatment of the indigenous as well is so dark that to sort of get through that wild west place, you have to sort of have this hardness and an irony that sort of allows you to deflect it. You know, there's that sort of box. That's a tribal of, tactic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's fascinating. And actually, that's why Justin said he wanted you was because he wanted you to play against type, didn't he? He said he wanted... Yeah, yeah. He, he said he'd like... I think what he wanted... The idea of Peter Kerry's beautiful book that this is the film's based on yeah. is... Um, uh, you know, it's because of Peter Kerry being Australian. I think he was looking at, you know, what 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 does it mean to to take the voice of a symbol and to create his own version of, uh, you know, it's when when Ned Kelly is sort of recognised as a bit of an outline, if you know what I mean, as a silhouette, to kind of go, well, why have we chosen that silhouette? And now that we have, we just have the silhouette automatically, who was this man inside of that? And has created a kind of is a mixture of like kind of is played on the idea of creating his own version of that. And it's a mixture of his own truth and it's the truth that is known about the man. Um, and, uh, and I think, you know, just he's, he's kind of represents a very typical, um, I, I guess, black and white version of masculinity, particularly. Um, and I think Justin wanted there to be a sort of articulacy and a vulnerability to, to Ned and then sort of brutalize that. And I think, cause I'm not particularly hard, I don't really fit that kind of hard man silhouette in the first place. It was like, he wanted to kind of, you know, me to concentrate on the beginning bit, which felt closer to, I guess, my own temperament and personality and, and build layers and layers and layers of like, if, if, you know, if you take something that is, if you take anything and whip it hard enough, at what point will it, what, will it bite back, you know? And that, that sort of look at, why you know why people why people react and and so yeah so it was sort of a case of even that was another part of the research was changing my body and all that kind of stuff and yeah you know, I remember even him saying like just the he said don't he said don't be don't be nice he said don't be so nice try it with me just just see what it feels like not to talk like that when you when you don't you know when we're talking to it you know just don't say anything make people come to you and just see how that how that power feels like you know we're all saying when we got on we're being so polite to each other like, oh, oh sorry are you uh, it's nice to meet you hey but he was like if you just sit there and let someone come to you what does make them squirm you know and how easily that can be done and you know how oh, you can yeah. just from that feeling how much, well, that's you, so how much advice. Advice. i'm gonna try that yeah. wow i never yeah. thought of that how much <laughs> you learn about the other person when uh by just leaving that silence and leaving that space <laughs> Yeah, but I think it's like you watch Louis Theroux documentaries, he just doesn't say anything and people yeah. start going, what, what, what I meant by that was, and actually what I meant that because, and that thing happened to me and that's the reason I think that, because, and you sort of people like start unraveling in front of you. And it's quite a powerful position to take, to just sit back. Have you, how much of, how much of that do you think you've taken, did you leave it all there? Or have you, have you sort of, has, has any of that crept into who you are post, post making the film? No, I think, I, I don't think I've sort of, would I haven't used that sort of side of stuff. I think I think that the, the you know it was of course it's 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 make it's make believe it's a it's a film, but it was quite an extreme experience. And I think the extreme sort of physically and emotionally going to extreme places. I've taken that with me. I sort of know I kind of went beyond certain limits that I that I had before, and I now know like limits have been pushed. And I kind of I feel. I, I don't know, I, I, I feel like I know where those new limits are and, and sort of what, how it feels to be within those, you know, how much further you can actually go or when you're cutting short, or it, whatever it is. Um, even in research, you know, you kind of go, God, like there's, there's a lot that you can do. It's not just learning your lines. You can, 
go to these places you can find out and some of it won't be of you know be of literal tangible kind of use is the wrong word because everything is useful but but I, I guess that's what I took with me is a sort of expansion of my understanding of the process but you know but still I, I, like I wouldn't just sit in silence for something. Yeah. <laughs> that's, not, that's not something you've deployed since then it's the fuck was not one. <laughs> yeah 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 we wanted to um encourage people to see the movie and it's and it's not an easy movie so hmm. could you just tell us a bit about why you think people why people should see it and what you're proud of in it I, th I think I think well I hope people will see the movie because uh, partly because of that because it's a, in a way it's a difficult sell because it doesn't it doesn't pander to any uh, I'm trying to think of the right word it is made solely to be the creative vision that it is and there is there has been no compromise artistically or in in this experience and story that Justin's wanted to put across and the attitude with which it was made is so purely for the piece. And, and I, think, I think that's really commendable. And I think that, that if people are still open to, to kind of offerings like that, it will mean that we can kind of widen the sort of what's acceptable. I think because of course there is an element, this is, you know, this is an, an industry and industry needs to sort of have a turnover and the things that, the things that are more likely to get to make a turnover are the things that are more likely to get made and and it sort of narrows what we receive i think where in a way although it's a shame that this isn't at the cinema this off this time and way in which we can view things offers people the opportunity to to take a chance on stuff because it's simply you know it doesn't cost as much like the cinema is expensive it's a journey you know you might do one trip a week so you and your partner so you want to choose something that you both like but this allows people to kind of just take a chance on something and i and i think and i hope and i hope that they will with this because of it was made purely with with the creation in mind yeah, i mean the last question we wanted to ask because it's a film club and we have found people have been incredibly connected and mm. and united over this and brought together and it's generated this amazing spirit but is there something that you particularly love about movies or what, what is the power of movies that gives you that amazing connection do you think i think i think it's i think it's so many things at once i think first and foremost i just whenever you put on a film i get such excitement when it kind of goes black and the titles start to roll even if it's like you know the studio titles it's like working titles or universal and sometimes with a film, they would have changed that. So like the Universal sign will have a slightly different soundtrack or they would have made it, you know, they would have changed the coloration of it. I'm like, oh, okay, that's the first hook into the world. And that beginning of a film when that silence before the first shot, I just, that for me is just endlessly exciting, the possibility of that beginning. So I think there's that. And then in terms of people connecting, it's just, it's all stories, you know, like it's all, you know, you know what, you sort of you know you know what you know you know what you experience and this is like that's it's like it's like meeting new people when you go when you sort of meet new characters and there's things that you can can take from that all of the time from someone else's the way in which they react in a situation or experience a situation or the situation itself it teaches you it gives you insight as to oh I feel like I would act in the same way or I wouldn't do that at all or how would I act if I was in that place I think that constant um, you know, sort of, it's, it's, a, it's a form of sharing. So I think that's what that's what I get from it. It's just it's storytelling. You're right. That that first that first glimpse, that first window into like what the world's going to be, even if it's a like slightly adapted um, studio, you know, image at the beginning, it's always so exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah man. Dude, thank you so much for for chatting. About yeah. we've, we've been we've been really like we've been um because like, obviously the idea of this was just to do something nice to allow people to who, who you know maybe by themselves or whatever to watch films use that as an excuse to kind of travel a bit and escape but then also we want to we want to i think the films that i'm always inclined to watch are way more left and and much darker and so this you know is is exactly in obviously in that vein but i think we've been sort of cautious with what we're recommending of, of thinking about not wanting to go too dark for people but i think so that you know it, it's like like with the US, we chose the Sun of Sunshine over Mulholland Drive, for example, because 
you know, it was just, like just in wanting to in wanting to feel like this is, this was a kind of positive escape. But it's really hard because I think this is exactly the kind of film that I would I you know I love and would want to watch and would would want to recommend. But I know that there's a like there's a limit to how far some people will go. So it's it's, yeah. nice, it's nice to be able to, to 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 chat about it and to and to push people towards it. But you know, with the caveat that um, it's it's. It, it's dark. It's brutal. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But um, yeah, man, I'm. Yeah. It's got the best shootout scene in the world ever. <laughs> and right. how many people can say that? Eh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, George, thank you so much. It's been brilliant. Uh, thank you for having me. And I guess yeah, hopefully speak to you guys soon down the way with perhaps perhaps another another film or something. That would be um, amazing if that's all right. Thank you so much, dude. And good luck with your writing. And um, cheers. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. All right, and likewise, good luck with this somewhere. And uh, yeah, see you soon, Charlotte. Bye. That's the love, guys. Bye bye. Take care.